how to evaluate middle with the skin the lower part of the middle with the skin of concept of the heart and the coverings the upper part of the middle with skin consists of the great vessels and other structures entering from the neck into the thorax so how to read the lower part of the middle mediastinum and the upper part of the middle mediastinum i have already told you in session 7 this is session number 8 in this session i want to discuss about the few points regarding the upper part of the middle mediastinum you see this an important x ray which is visible in front of you that is there is a cardio megaly is there some of the artifacts are seen here all the way are there and important point is this is a aortic knuckle it is not a tumor it's a aortic knuckle the hyla is there they are clearly visible this is the ascending aorta which is moving like this this is unfolding of the aortic aorta with a prominent aortic knuckle and you can see in this aortic knuckle there is a uh, shadow which is curved shadow and it is hyperdense shadow it is due to the calcification and uh, there are other shadows as well inside it look very carefully this is egg shell calcification in the aorta aortic knuckle that is a part of the arch of aorta this one Size is normal, although it is prominent, and there is a bronchovascular marking is moving in this direction. This is called upper lobe divergent. Now, patient is in the failure actually, and these are the signs of the failure, and the and the radiology is concerned. This is very common uh, X-ray which you will see in your life. Now, coming to the another important point which I have not told you previously. about the pulmonary edema and it is a cardiogenic pulmonary edema which in the x-ray there are certain stages you can see here you see the costochronic angle on the left side is not visible on the right side is also not visible and uh, there is a cardiomegaly is there upper lobe divergent signs are there coming from the hyla and uh, bronchovascular markings are very very prominent there is compensatory slightly impetuous chest is seen take here is 10 degree towards the right side so it is normal one the thing is this the pulmonary edema uh, specific one x ray is not specific you have to add all the findings and then you can tell that it is due to the pulmonary edema cardiogenic you will see here first of all there is pulmonary hypertension the thing is this here this is the left hyla this is the right hyla they are prominent hyla prominent hyla mean that the uh, hyper dense hyla density is more prominence because of the more blood is coming inside the Uh, pulmonary vasculature loaded with the blood because of the pulmonary hypertension see the bronchovascular vascular markings are very very thin and it is called pruning pruning p r u n i n g pruning of the bronchovascular markings and it uh, indicates that uh, there is pulmonary hypertension the cardiomegaly is the the dominant left ventricular Hyla 
fullness with haziness. With a full hala and large heart, rural diffusion, because of the pulmonary hypertension, left atrial pressure transmitted to the pulmonary veins and then on the right side, the pulmonary arteries will be involved. Pulmonary venous hypertension, which will be uh, seen as the bronchovascular markings are prominent uh, on the both sides, and then there will be haziness or hyla will become more prominent, you can see. And the pulmonary conus becomes more prominent also. So this is called hyalophilus with haziness. It is because of the pressure which is loaded in the pulmonary veins because of the high pressure in the left atrium. The first sign appearing which is very difficult to recognize are the curly lines. The curly lines are A, B and C. A means apical, upper part. Now B means it is the basal base is this and C is central near the hyla. If the you see these striations which is marked here very very closely with the magnifying glass the linear striations are seen here. These are the curly B lines although it is very difficult for a person to these are uh, to detect it. And the curly A lines can be visible easily. No problem. Central, if there is central lines, C, curly C lines can be visible. The first lines are the most important one. That is B lines. Curly C lines, first of all. Central lines. Here. These are the lines, stations, which are coming out. The curly C lines. Curly B line, diagnostic of the pulmonary edema. It is sign kion. Rather, these are these are seen like this situation and very near to the diaphragm. These are striations here, linear striations, because of the probability of the lymphatic vessels which are enlarged and draining it, this part. This is called the B lines. On the base, on the right side it is very visible, left side is also visible, but on the right side uh, near the diaphragm they are very visible. Curly lines, curly A, apex, B, basal, C. First of all, these the B lines will appear, followed by A lines and then C lines. So the, the, the sequence is B, then you will find C and A, apex. That is called upper lobe divergent lines. Now visible here. You see this, these are stations. These, this one, where my cursor is moving, these stations, here is stations, you can see, here is stations, these are curly B lines. Here the, this is the central part, this part, these are the central lines, and these are the A lines above this one. So this is the diagnostic that is curly B lines are very diagnostic of the early onset of the pulmonary edema. These are, these are the first signs which are appearing. Pulmonary edema, if it is going on without treatment, it will take this type of shape, non-homogeneous video opacity on this side also, on this side also. So one can mix with the non-homogeneous opacity of the inflammation. So it will be, it is dissolving. If you give the Loop, di loop diuretic, it will resolve day by day and it will take the different type of shapes. Upper lobe divergent, this is upper lobe divergent, they are A actually, the lines are A basically, and upper lobe divergent. Again, this is a sign of a pulmonary edema. If more worse, then these lines have become very, very reticulated type of uh, mixture of lines on this side, on this side, spider web type of. It is called a spiral web appearance in pulmonary edema. It is a Vaseline sign of the pulmonary edema. More is this what is called butterfly wing. The lines are spreading now like butterfly. Each the body is there, the, the just like butterfly wing appearance. It is again a sign of the pulmonary edema, a worsening 
uh, Parmani Adima. Parmani Adima, if it will become more worse, it will take the bat wing. Big, big, you know, big, big, big wings are there. So there are, of course, uh, Parmani Adima of the bat wing appearance. And the uh, thing is this, uh, you have to, you know, it is the worsening, you have to manage now. Otherwise, patient will die, of course. If it is more worse, it will cause the uh, pleural diffusion bilateral. This is a uh, curve, you see, the Alice's curve. If it becomes more worse, it will, it will become massive pleural diffusion. It is not para pneumonic type, but it is uh, a curly, you know, this is the Alice's curve which is seen here. The height of the lungs will be described afterwards. You know, I have given the, the, the different stages of the pulmonary edema. A hyla will be this is the right hyla, this is the left hyla. The right hyla has got a body and the upper pa part and the lower part. It is the shape like the one is the stem, one is going up and one is down, one is the central part. So it is the inverted but it's called little T, T shaped. So it is more permanent. Everybody has got this type of a thing. Hala are more prominent on the right side, everybody. Do not uh, mix it with a pathology because it is a normal one. And the left hala is C-shaped hala. It is uh, inverted C-shape, small knuckle type of a thing here. So this is the, these are the uh, morphology. Now to study the hala, there are two things. One is the size. The, the hala, hala is formed because of the pulmonary artery, because of the pulmonary vein, because of the pulmonary lymphatics, because of the bronchial arteries, because of the bronchial veins, pulmonary lymphatics and the uh, bronchial lymphatics. There are seven components, six components along with it. The more one is the bronchial, that is the pulmonary arteries are concerned. And pulmonary artery and pulmonary veins, both causing the bronchovascular markings, specifically arising from the hyla. Uh, to, and they are draining it or they are supplying it. The hyla are formed because of the vessels. These are the contents of the hyla, which I have said about it. The bronchus and the pulmonary artery, the pulmonary veins and lymphatics, so on. The differentiation between, in this part, it should be differentiated whether it is a vascular shadow or non-vascular shadow. If it is a non-vascular non shadow, because of the hyla lymphadenopathy, then it becomes irregular. The margins are irregular. Look, the irregularity of the margins. If it is because of the fullness of the hyla, of the prominency of the hyla, the margins are very smooth. Here you see the right hyla has got upper part, the lower part, the middle part is there. And here again the C-shaped inverted uh, hyla, which is seen here, the central calcifications are also seen. Along with it, this is a vascular type of marking, it's a vascular shadow. Now, unilateral hyaline enlargement, if you want to study the hyla, two things should be noted. One is the size, second is the shape. Now, size is concerned, in most of the cases, it is hardly uh, 2.5 centimeter from the border of the heart, not more than that. If it is more than 2.5 centimeter, I assume to it to be enlarged hyla. If it is more dense, I will say it is prominent hyla. So this is a unilateral enlargement. The prominent, by how you say it is prominent? Prominent means that the radio density of the cardiac shadow and the hyla is equal. Here it is not equal. Aerograms are visible inside. So they are a large hyla of the right side. Hyla in a lateral view it is seen in this fashion. This is one. Here and here. On the later view, as concerned, they are prominent, uh, prominent uh, hyla here and here. The causes of unilateral enlargement are manifold, like the metastatic malignancy, atypical pulmonary tuberculosis, and the other conditions which can cause is the uh, the pneumonias, community acquired pneumonias, and draining towards the lymph nodes. Hodgkin's can cause it and lymphoma, adenocarcinoma, bronchial carcinoma, and, and uh, it, it seconded in the, in the hyla bronchogenic lymphoma, etc., Hodgkin. So these are the long list of it, a unilateral. But bilateral enlargement of the hyla seen here, it is enlarged and 
Thailand, not prominent because there are uh, aerogram inside it and uh, uh, these are the enlargement. If you measure it, it is more than 2.5 centimeter. Bilateral are seen in many conditions, sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, mycoplasma, lymphoma, carcinoma, silicosis, barriers, everything. You know, th those conditions which are causing the septicemia, whether it is what type of the bacterial or atypical bacterial, typical bacterial, gram positive, gram negative, rickettsia, mycoplasmas, shirmarias, and fungal, and a lot of infections can cause it. And uh, even the interstitial hypodystrophy of Hippel's disease, that is, will also cause the, uh, the enlargement of the hyla, Hippel's disease. It is intestinal problem, actually. The small intestine involved and causing the malabsorption. It is called the intestinal lymphodystrophy. Now, prominent and large hyla, both are seen. In prominence, they are prominent as well as enlarged. It means there is pulmonary hypertension along with the hyla limit in the pity. Now, this line is of the mediastinum, this is the mediastinum, upper part, which is a large one. You see the lines, they are not regular, and it is because the paratracheal uh, lymph lymphadenopathy, and this is the tracheal, and afterwards the haziness, which is parallel to it, is at the paratracheal lymphadenopathy. Both sides are involved here, although there are other findings as well. These are the cardiac shadows. This is the large hyla. This is the large hyla, prominent as well. Sarcoidosis stage is one, two, and three sign. The first one is the bilateral symmetrical lymphadenopathy, which is seen here, and the CT also. Second stage, in which condition we will find the lymphadenopathy along with the reticulated appearance uh, that is seen in this case, micro <coughs> nodular, uh, you know, densities, reticular nodular shadowings reaching towards the uh, little part of the chest and in that stage 3 the, the lymph nodes are not important. They are not enlarged, they are not prominent but the interstitial lung disease occurs unilaterally or bilaterally. Lung stage 3. Stage 4 is complication other than that. and It causes the complication in stage 4. The, for example, pleural effusion, pulmonary destruction, collapse associated with the uh, after stage 3 is stage 4. This is one. You see the, 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 the condition is worsening, it is causing the darkening now, and uh, thick articulation is seen, and placing the, the pulmonary parenchyma into the fibrous tissue. A lot of patches are seen here. It can cause the uh, honeycombing also in this stage. Now, gone complex, you know what is this? It is a primary uh, type of a uh, tuberculosis first lesion is in the middle part, uh, in the middle part of the right middle zone mostly. Draining lymph nodes is also enlarged and prominent. If both are combined, then it is called wounds complex. Focus is this here somewhere. This is gone now, it is not seen clearly. Gone com this is focus if it is enlarged with this uh, hyla or prominent hyla, this is called wounds complex. It is due to the uh, what is called primary type of a tuberculosis. Tuberculosis hyaluronephropathy is seen like this, and uh, there are calcifications are also seen. Calcification is a good sign. I mean, the person has got the, the in, enough immunity to fight against infection. You know, calcifications are there in the hyla. There are prominent hyla, which is seen here, and with the enlargement. Bilateral lymphopathy with infectious malignancy is very common. I have seen many cases of infectious mononucleosis. In young people, they are, the enlargement is there as well as prominent hyla are there. All the lung fields are seem to be normal. Hodgkin lymphoma, very typically paratracheal lymph nodes are enlarged as well as hyla lymph nodes are enlarged. Complex, you know, all upper part of the middle system is enlarged. It is not a vascular shadow because it is irregular. Margins are seen. These are irregular margins. Paratracheal lymph nodes plus the retro uh, hyalur lymph nodes or perihyalur lymph nodes, hyalur lymph nodes, all are enlarged and it's causing the widening of the mediastinum. I've seen many cases of this and I have diagnosed. Histoplasmosis is an important thing, it is enlarged hyla, prominent hyla, along with this calcification, even cornification occurs. 
is in astroplasmosis. Another interesting point is that go for the spleen and x-ray the abdomen, you will find the calcifications in the spleen also. So this condition will cause the calcification, early calcification. It is very quick reaction in the body and it is ended in the chronic inflammation leading to the calcification. It is marked calcification, coronification that is. So this is the end of session 8 which I have told you about the hyla and about the some part of the, I have discussed the skygrams of the pulmonary edema stages and sarcoidosis also. And also I have shown you the cases associated with the upper part of middle sphenium uh, widening and uh, hyla lymphadenopathy. I think you can, uh, you can understand uh, after this very short discussion uh, that you can learn it, the hyla and the other thing which I have told you, inshallah we will meet again in the last session of the, uh, this uh, clinical chest video radiology and if you repeat uh, one by one you can understand well how to report the X-ray. So I will uh, pray for your success inshallah and I hope you will be benefited from these uh, uh, sessions. Inshallah we will meet you soon. Mama alayna illal balaq.